He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy second Sunday of Easter. <laughs> we won't keep doing that every week between now and Pentecost, but we, we might do it once or twice more just to keep you on your toes. Well, welcome to Trinity Presbyterian Church for worship on the second Sunday of Easter. I'm Pastor Chris Miller. Delighted you are here with us in worship today. 
If you are seated along the center side of your pew, would you grab the green friendship fellowship pads, pass them along, make a note of your attendance here with us today. We wanna to welcome especially any guests or visitors that we have with us. If you are a first time visitor, uh, we want to encourage you to stop by the welcome desk in the west entry and pick up a visitor gift. And also to fill out the green visitor card that you'll find in the fellowship pad. You'll also see pink prayer request cards in there. For anyone, if you have prayer requests that you would like to share with our team this week, we would encourage you to fill those out. For those worshiping with us online, you can also find those prayer requests and connection cards digitally on our website. A couple reminders about life and ministry this week. Um, right after worship, two things we want you to know. I'm going to remember, Eilis. Okay. If you are able to stick around for a minute or two after worship and help us get chairs out of the choir loft, next Sunday, the B Street Bells are going to be playing both at the Brentwood and Trinity service, and it will make life much easier if the chairs are not here, if they're somewhere else. Eilis will be in charge after worship, so if you are able to help Eilis, just this way, grab a chair, she'll tell you where to put them. That would be lovely. Secondly, if you have not yet had your glamour shot taken for the church directory, after worship, I'll be down in the West Entry taking pictures for a few minutes. Tomorrow, from 10 to 2, we'll be taking pictures also in the West End. Um, that will be our last kind of open call scheduled slot for that, okay? So if you haven't had a picture taken, this is your call, okay? Um, so please, please, please do that. You can also email us a photo. The information on that's been in the, direct, in the newsletter for a while. So check that out. Email me if you have questions. Curbside food drive also tomorrow, 10 to 11.30, so you can do double duty. You can come bring donations, help support our partners at Crosslines, and get your picture taken if you so desire. All right, we've got some clipboards, right? Always, Robert, can I impose on you to start these around one on either side? Coming up on April 22nd, that is a Monday, we are having a pottery painting party at Firehouse Pottery down on Lone Pine in the Galloway area from 4 to 5.30 p.m. We need RSVP numbers, okay? Um, so what this, if you've not done pottery painting at a place like Firehouse, they have pre-formed uh, pieces of pottery all the way from tiles and little critters all the way to mugs and plates and all sorts of things. And I can vouch you do not need to be a great artist to be able to do this. I have done it. If I can do it, you can do it, okay? Um, they have all sorts of fun colors. You can paint the pottery. They then take it, fire it, glaze it, and you get it back a few days later. Trinity is covering the first $10 toward whatever you want to make. So there are some pieces that are just 10 bucks. So you can come and paint uh, and just hang out and have a good time of fellowship. If you want to do something that is more than $10, we just ask that you cover the difference. We'll be signing up this week and next week for folks that want to go. We need a count. You do not have to pay anything in advance. There will also be an opportunity to carpool, okay? So clipboards going around, pottery painting. I will say this is a wonderful kids activity, okay? This is very kid friendly. We've done it with our kids lots and they love it, so. What? Yes, we also need to know, even if you're not planning to paint, we need to know people in the building, okay? And there is no cost to attend. The only cost is if you choose to physically get an item to paint and purchase, okay? So say you are a parent coming with a child, sign up both of you, so we, because we have to know how many are in the building for attendance stuff, okay? All right, um, last announcement, I believe. Is there anything else that someone asked me to mention? Okay. Presbyterian oh, Presbyterian women. Um, there is a sign up for the PW event on the, west, on the welcome desk in the West Entry. Remind me on the date on that. Okay, 
So all women are invited to join the PW Regional event that's taking place on the 20th at Ozark Presbyterian Church. There will be a carpool available. If you're interested, sign up on the sheet in the West Entry. Last announcement, um, and I'm sorry that this is short notice, but I just found out Friday. I am having hand surgery next Thursday. Um, it's been a couple years in the process, <laughs> and we went from an appointment on Wednesday to, hey, you're having surgery next week. So I'm having surgery next week. I will be out for a week starting Thursday. That means I will not be here next Sunday nor the week following um, as I go through a recovery for that. Laura Fleetwood will be preaching next Sunday, so be sure to be here for that. Um, but if you have things that you need from me, sooner rather than later would be the timeline on that. So I'll be here, I'm planning to be in the office as normal through Wednesday, uh, but if there's something that you need, let me know, preferably by Monday or Tuesday if you can, otherwise I'll be back on the 21st. Um, okay. Second Sunday of Easter, it's good. Friends, it's good to be with you in worship today. Um, if you're like me, maybe you still feel like you're coming down off the energy of Easter weekend. Maybe you're still recovering a bit from the disruption to life, but whatever it has been, I encourage you to take a moment, to take a deep breath, to center yourself in this time and place, and center our hearts on the worship of God. Friends in Christ, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us come together in joy on this day as we share in our call to worship. Jesus said, Follow me. Jesus said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus said, Forgive seventy times seven. Jesus said, Be my sheep. In response, we say, Here is my heart. Take and seal it. Seal it for I am first above. Let us worship God with all our hearts. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing to God's glory. Christ the Lord is risen today. Number 245. 
in the purple hymnal. For the last seven weeks, we've been following the life and faith of Peter, despite being one of Jesus' most loyal disciples. Peter still made mistakes. He was faithful and messy, humble and afraid, loving and cautious. We're a lot like Peter. Despite our faith, we make mistakes. Despite our belief, we carry unbelief. Despite our love, we can cause hurt. So like Peter, let us return to God in prayer, confessing the truth of our lives. God's grace does not stop with that humble, fearful servant. God's grace reaches all the way to us. Let us pray. Gracious God, like, like Peter, we crawl out of the boat only to sink. You tell us your truth, and then we push it away. We ask God for forgiveness, and are surprised by the events. We press our faith and deny it three times. We run to the empty tomb and leave in silence. Over and over again, we find ourselves wandering journey of faith. Tether us to your heart. Forget our surprise, our denial, and our limited imagination. Call us out of the boat once more. 
we are, we are eager to return to you. With, with humble hearts, hearts we pray. Amen. 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 I invite you to take a moment in silence now to offer your own personal prayers to God. The first time Peter saw Jesus after the crucifixion, Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? This repetition was not because Jesus doubted Peter's word. This repetition was because Jesus was offering Peter grace. You see, the last time Jesus and Peter were together, Peter said three times, I do not know that man. So when Jesus returned, he asked Peter, do you love me? And in that moment, he allowed Peter to turn his denials into love. Friends, the grace of God knows no end. When we stumble, when we fall, when we deny God or cause harm, Jesus meets us where we are and offers us a second chance. So rest in this good news. Does God love you? Yes, yes, yes. God loves you. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God for a love that never ends. We respond to God's assurance with hope and joy. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing, Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me, number 582. Friends, no matter how many times we have wandered away from God, God is still there waiting to welcome us back. And so we need not fear, for the peace of Christ is with us. And so at this moment, we take a pause in our worship to extend that same peace to those around us, saying, The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Share a greeting and a sign of peace with those around you.
And good morning, good morning. <laughs> How are we doing? Yay! Yay! All right, so is today Easter? Yeah! <laughs> You are more right than you think. So, so we wouldn't say that t last Sunday was Easter, right? Last Sunday, we got all dressed up, and there were eggs, and maybe there were bunnies, and there were extra flowers in church that have, nice that have hung on, and all I, sorts of... I still see, like, now I see the... Yeah. The, yeah, the, some of the flowers are still here. They're still doing well, which... We'll see how many weeks that lasts, but that's okay. But so in the they church, start doing this, and then we'll have to, that we'll have to try water. Right yeah, if they start to to wilt, we'll have to water them. Thank goodness there's someone at Brentwood who's a florist who does really really good work. Um, so, but today is what we call the second Sunday of Easter, and next Sunday will be the third, and the Sunday after that will be the fourth Sunday of Easter, because in the church, even though Easter is only one Sunday, it's part of a season that lasts 50 whole days until a special day that will come in a while called Pentecost, because the fact that Jesus rose from the dead is so important that we don't just celebrate it one day, we celebrate it for a whole season. So that is really exciting, and that's why the first hymn we sang today was an Easter hymn. Christ the Lord is risen today. Someone might have been sitting here going, but I thought that was last week. <laughs> it was last week, and it's also today, and it'll be next Sunday, and it's something that is so exciting and so joyful that we celebrate it for a whole season of the church year. So you'll hear us singing joyful songs for a long time here at church, okay? So let's say a prayer together. Let's pray. God, we are so happy that we don't just get to celebrate Easter one day, but that we get to celebrate it for a whole bunch of days here in church. So help us remember that you love us so, so, so much. And now we'll pray the prayer that your son taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. All right, our kiddos can head off to worship and wonder or back with their adults. Okay, go that way. Those shoes are very cool, yes. Man, light up pink shoes. Life is good, I tell you what. going to say the level of excitement that they have about their shoes that's the level of excitement we should have about Easter Amen. just tossing that out there let us pray God of second chances and God of new life we have spent our days wandering like Peter we have had milled about through nearly every state of faith we have had courage days and convicted days, learning days and questioning days. We have had days where we run to you, days for diving out of the boat, days for deep joy, and days where the pain of the world feels too close to bear. So as we bring our wandering hearts to you, we ask that you draw us in. Allow this story to spark something new in us. Allow this story of grace to give us pause 
and pull us in. We are listening. Amen. Our first reading today is from Luke 5, verses 1 through 11. Hear the word of the Lord. Once, when Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there on the shore. The fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out your nets into the deep water. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Let, yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were breaking. So they signaled to their partners on the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell out at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him.
you may have noticed that our first reading was from the calling of Peter, the calling of the disciples. For our second reading, we turn to the other end of the story, to John 21, 1 through 19. And I want you to listen for parallels between the two, okay? Listen for God's word. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said, we will go with you. They went out, got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you, because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we come to this familiar story, seeking a new word for today. We ask it in your son's name. Amen. So as Max mentioned earlier, over this season of Lent and Holy Week and Easter, we have been journeying with Peter through his faith journey. We've been wandering along the road from his calling at the lake shore, his fear on the waves, professing his faith, faith and longing for stability, finding curiosity and confusion in the teaching of Christ, feeling the pain of his denial three times, and his amazement 
after running to the tomb on Easter morning. And today, we find Peter back where he started, back fishing, back on the shore. Now, I want to pause here, and we're not gonna take a lot of time on this, but I wonder what, I ask you to listen for parallels between the two readings, between the calling of Peter in Luke 5 and this story of Peter on the shoreline in this later passage from John. So take about 30 seconds, turn to someone close to you. What did you notice? What parallels, what similarities did you hear? Go. What did we notice? Similarities between these two passages, these two different places in the biblical narrative. No fish to a lot of fish. No fish to a lot of fish. Yes. We start with no fish, Jesus shows up, there's a lot of fish. Others. Mm, recognizing Christ as somebody special. First, this sense of we don't know who he is, but then in this moment, there's recognition, certainly. Others? That's a good catch. Yeah, in the first passage, they said the net was starting to break, but in the second passage, we're told that the net doesn't break. Sure. Anything else we noticed? Follow me. Follow me. Interesting, right? There is this idea that faith involves action, right? Even if that action isn't perfect. Any other thoughts? There wasn't a big, huge list here, so it's not like I don't think we've missed anything super obvious. You got the highlights. Well done. An interesting side note, <clears throat> I'm not sure how much I personally put sock into this, but I think it's an interesting thing some commentators have noted. What kind of fire is Jesus standing at on the lake shore? We catch the detail? A charcoal fire. Where else do we hear about a charcoal fire? Anyone remember? In the courtyard, in the courtyard. The fire that Peter is standing around when he denies Christ is specifically identified as a charcoal fire. So hold on to that, okay? So there's no catch of fish. Jesus tells them what to do, and they follow. They're tired after a night of fishing, and then this idea to follow me. Now, before we dive into a couple other ideas, I think there's an interesting question for me here, and that is why do Peter and the disciples decide to go fishing, right? This is after they've had a couple of encounters with the post-resurrection Jesus, right? And they're trying to make sense of what the world is like now. Right? They've gotten this, you know, Jesus is doing this, hey, I show up for a little bit and then I disappear again, right? And I'm only going to be here a little while. And what are we going to do with it? So why do they go back to fishing? Barry, you are chuckling and I wonder why. I'm not going to put you on the spot, but if you have a comment, I'd love to hear it. When you don't know what to do, sometimes the best thing to do is go fishing. <laughs> 
that's spot on. I totally agree with you. If you didn't hear that, if, if you don't know what to do, sometimes the best thing to do is to go fishing, okay? Now, I will say for me, it isn't fishing, right? For me, it's building Lego, okay? Right? <laughs> Maybe f for you, it, Sarah, can I guess it's golfing? No. No. I was yeah. Say, I Yes. Spot on, right? They hadn't yet really made sense of the fact that they were being sent out, right? And when we are making sense of what our calling is, sometimes we run back to what we know. We go back to the thing that is comfortable. Now, does Jesus criticize them for going fishing? No. Back on the hand, you know, bad disciples, <laughs> right? Jesus greets them and takes the fruit of that night, which was nothing, and transforms it into a holy encounter, right? So I'll just put out there, I wonder what it is for you. What do you run back to in times of uncertainty, in times when your calling isn't clear? Right? I bet you have a thing, whether it's fishing or Lego or golf or whatever the thing might be, right? I bet you have a thing that is your safe place. The point of this sermon is not that that's bad, but that maybe it's a sign that you need to be paying attention to see if breakfast is coming. Because what does Jesus do first? Jesus feeds the disciples. He grills some fish and grills some bread and welcomes them onto the shore. They're hungry, they're tired, and he feeds them, right? He feeds them with bread and fish. What story does this remind us of? Communion and feeding of the 5,000 both, right? Feeding of the 5,000 because it's bread and fish, right? Jesus seems to like a good bread and fish sandwich, okay? Some grilled fish, some nice flatbread. I can get on board. A little tartar sauce would be great, okay? Jesus cares for their physical needs, not just their spiritual ones. I think that's important, so I'm going to say it again. Jesus cares for the, the physical needs of his followers, not just the spiritual needs. He doesn't start by going to Peter and said, okay, now you denied me three times and we're going to have this really uh, great moment that people are going to be talking about in a couple thousand years. No, he says, hey, Peter, get some fish. I've got the fire started. Let's have some breakfast. Feed your body. Rest your body. We'll deal with the spiritual stuff in a moment. And note that they take time to eat. John specifically says, after they finished breakfast, that's when this major conversation happens. After they've sat down and broken bread and shared fish, shared conversation, reconnected. Those moments are holy. Right, the moments of the Easter brunch downstairs last week, those are holy moments. The moments when you get together with family that aren't maybe close or local and you share lunch, those are holy as much as anything we do here in the sanctuary. But Jesus doesn't just feed the body. Jesus also feeds the soul. Jesus comes to Peter in this conversation, and we've already heard earlier in the prayer of confession, right? Peter has denied Jesus three times, and three times he asks this question, Peter, do you love me not as a test, but as a testament to love? Three times Christ comes erasing the denial. Three times Christ comes and overcomes the separation. I think one of the most powerful things about the gospel story for us is look at the central characters, 
Peter, the one who doubts, Peter, the one who strays, Peter, the one who denies Christ, is the one that is entrusted with the keys of the kingdom. Peter is told that he is loved. Peter is told to go feed my sheep, feed my lambs, take care of the people. If Peter is entrusted with the kingdom, friends, we don't need to worry about our own capabilities. If Judas is served communion by Jesus, guess what? Everybody gets communion, right? If Judas gets it, everybody gets it, okay? Because Jesus' love, God's love, overcomes even our denials, even our separations, even our fears and doubts. Because our faith journey, just like Peter, operates in cycles. We have moments when we feel close to God, where we feel connected, where we feel like we get it those mountaintop moments of clarity and hope, and they're amazing. But we also have moments of doubt and fear and uncertainty. And because we have them does not mean we're unfaithful, does not mean that there is something wrong or broken with us. It means that we, like Peter, are human and that it's okay. I want you to hear this that even in the moments when you struggle, even in the moments when I turn my back on Christ, God still loves me, God still loves you, and is always going to be working to draw us closer, to bring us back to the table, back to the fish and the bread and the cup. Because, friends, there are lambs to be fed. There are sheep to be nurtured. There is a world that needs our loving presence. Because Christ is not here to do it without us. Christ needs us to be the hands and feet. And so Sarah, like you said, sometimes we run back to the things that we know because that's what's comfortable. Well, friends, A period of discomfort is coming, and it's okay, because God's with us, waiting with fish and bread and good fish, okay, waiting to nourish us. Hmm. I think he ambushed Peter. You think he ambushed Peter? Waiting on the shore. He knew he was coming. I don't know. I think when we, so John's question was, when we have those moments where we run back to the safe, to the comfortable, if that's a subconscious, I'm going to use my own phrasing, a subconscious uh, plea for God's help, I think it is. Right? We go searching for safety and comfort and God's going to find us in that moment, probably not saying, here, I bought you another Lego set, but more, I'm getting ready to give you a real hard shove, so have some breakfast first, okay? Here in a minute, we're going to come to the table. We come to this table, and, and Alyssa, I'm going to make a disciples joke here. People are going to start thinking we're disciples if we have communion every Sunday, right? It's just how the the calendar fell, and it's okay, right? It's hard for us Presbyterians. Three weeks in a row? Can I handle communion three weeks in a row? When we come to the table, I hope, I, I want you to use your imagination that you are coming to the shore, that Jesus is here with the grill and the fire welcoming you to a meal to nourish your body, to nourish your soul for whatever is coming next, okay? We're not just here grabbing a piece of bread and a little bit of grape juice. 
we are here to be reminded that Christ feeds us. Right? Amen. I'd like for you to turn to the affirmation of faith. You'll find it on the screens or in your bulletin. Friends, what do we believe? We believe in a God who shows up in our lives, surprising and catching us off guard in the best of ways. We believe in a God who cares for God's people, a shepherd who longs for her sheep to be fed and tended. We believe in a God who took on flesh, a God whose love changed the world as we know it. We believe that this here and now God invites us out of the boat, calling ordinary people like Peter, like us, into a life of service and community. And so we give our hearts, we give our whole hearts, and nothing less. Amen. Each week we gather, and each week we bring our tithes and our offerings, returning to God the resources entrusted to us. It's your faithful participation in our financial life that empowers Trinity to fulfill our mission of faithful discipleship to Jesus Christ. However you give today, thank you for your generosity. We worship God with our offertory. One of the first things Jesus did after the resurrection was to feed his disciples. The Gospel of John tells us it was a fire on the beach, bread and fish cooked over an open flame. Immediately the disciples knew it was Jesus because Jesus was always feeding people. Jesus was always telling the left out and the ignored, the hurting and the hungry, the sick and the hopeful, I have saved a seat for you at the table. Friends, this is why we come to this table 2,000 years later. We come to remember. We come to get close. We come to get a taste of the kingdom of God. So come, you hungry. Come, you seeking. Come with your wandering heart and your fickle faith and know that Christ has a seat saved just for you. Christ always has a seat saved for you and nothing, nothing, can ever change that. For this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Let us pray. God of second chances, God of grace, meet us here. 
just as you met the disciples at the beach, meet us here, meet us now, walk toward us and gather us in. For God, like Peter, we have known storms. This week, people in this room have grieved. This week, people in this room have felt overwhelmed by the news cycle and helpless to make a difference. This week, people in this room have been lonely, stressed, or uncertain. You know what our wind and waves look like. You know the nature of our storms. So just as you walk toward Peter, walk toward us. Meet us here, meet us now, gather us in. Fortunately, like Peter, we have also seen you stop the storms. We have seen your fingerprints in our lives in ways we did not always expect. So with gratitude in our hearts, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you for this church family that feels like a home. Thank you for the stars in the sky that remind us of your vastness. Thank you for stories of hope and forgiveness that inspire us to love. And thank you for the unending grace that encircles our wandering hearts. God, we have been back and forth to and from on this journey of faith. For every time that you walked the valley with us, for every time that you've met us on the mountaintop, and for every time you have stayed with us while we're, we ran toward you, we give you thanks. Never stop meeting us here, meeting us now, gathering us in. Amen. Now hear the story of how this sacrament began. On the night on which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He poured it out and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again. Friends, at Trinity, we practice an open table. That means that anyone who wishes to participate in the Feast of Christ, anyone who wishes to come to the table is welcome. You are welcome. So in a moment, after our servers are ready, I'll invite you to come forward by our side aisles, receive a piece of bread from our servers, then dip it into the cup, which contains grape juice. Do try to be careful not to get your, get your fingers in the juice, if possible. If you would prefer, at the center station, we'll have a tray that has individual cups of grape juice, along with gluten-free wafers for anyone who would prefer that. Jeannie, as always, will be making her way around the congregation, serving those who would prefer to receive the elements at their seats. I'll be over here to the side, happy to pray with you if you would like prayer this day. Those of you who are joining us doing communion at home, we invite you to use the bread and cup of your house as you celebrate with us. <coughs> Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would the servers please come forward? Come, all is ready.
Let us pray. Mighty God, holy is your name. We thank you for gathering us at your table and feeding us with the bread of life. As we leave this table to go to the many places where you call us, send your spirit to accompany us so we may share in your magnificent work, lifting up those who are laid low, showing mercy to all in need of human kindness, and feeding the bodies and hearts of all those who are hungry. Amen. Throughout this season, you may have noticed the theme texts for every week have come from the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And so it is fitting that we would close out this series by singing that very hymn. I invite you to rise as we sing, Come Thou Fount. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and all your days. Amen. We will go out with joy in the Spirit. We will go out with God. We will go out with joy in the Spirit. Sing a new song.